see you all again. We've had quite a ride together. Back to Scotland. The Fuhrer's own stash. Perhaps your finest hour, Captain Jefferson. Any time I'm taking Nazis down to Peg is my finest hour. Besides, these bastards had a Vermeer hanging next to a Valkenberg. Sure, they're both Dutch, but wrong damn century. Olivia, your field work at Nuschwenstein led us to over 6,000 pieces stolen from private collectors in France. The Nazis have taken so much from us all. This art belongs to the people. And who can forget the Merkur's salt mine? Yeah, yeah, I know what I did, but hold your applause. I'd rather try knobbing a rolling donut before I bust my arse with your pennies again. It's not worth it, mate. Duly noted. Which brings us to Middleburg and the current operation. Dr. Fisher? Ten days ago, we received a dossier. Material smuggled out by a young Austrian scientist who's reconsidering his loyalties. In it, he provides the location of a hidden bunker where Dr. Straub and Colonel Richter have been collecting some peculiar pieces. Whatever they found, it's being used to power some kind of experiment. You have no idea what you're dealing with, do you? Your mission is to seize that relic. Everything else is on a need-to-know basis. Is it just me? Or does it seem that we're a wee bit late to the party? I didn't sign up for this shite. None of us did. But here we are, and you have your mission just as I have mine. To find and rescue the scientist who risked his life to get us this intelligence. Klaus Fischer, my brother. I'm in antiquities, darling. Not search and rescue. Best of luck. What the hell was that? I told you that's worth bugger! I often told you! It's too soon for us to be back in the field. Rodeo was wrong to send us out. Yeah, anybody else wish he hadn't survived the train wreck. Oh, shit. I watched you at the briefing. You don't like this place. What is it? Rodeau said you'd been here before. Yeah, well, this place has got some history. Poking out of the sea like Lucifer's middle finger. No surprised Stroke came here to this piece of shit island. I'm just wondering why we followed him. We need to find the rest of the sword before he does. We need to... We know why you're here, Marie. At least this time you're not pretending to care about our cause. This is different. We should have heavy fog all morning. If everything goes well, nobody will fire a shot. Yeah, why have things ever gone well for our little tea party? Stay close. 
close. Let's move, people. Where's the other boat? This damn island. This goddamn island! Nobody is. We need to get off this ship in one. Attention! The hatches are opening! Get down here! Now! military force, a force composed entirely of the dead, is torn across the face of Europe. It has fallen on us, the newly formed Bureau of Archaic Technologies, to be the tip of the spear in this fight. We are woefully outnumbered. We cannot match this enemy blow for blow. But with the help of our new allies, we will strike where they are most vulnerable. We will be smart, we will be fast, we will be lethal, but we must do more than simply kill our enemies. We must utterly destroy them. Very subtle, yeah. I don't need any more warning. It's been a grand visit. Thanks for the memories. Be sure to write, but now it's time to leave. <laughs> Such a fine, lots of answers down there. Answers to questions I hadn't even thought to ask. Oh, all gone. No, not all gone. Didn't you read the markings on the wall? The cuneiform inscriptions? 
Come on, Professor. You could read that. I mean, well, I mean, I recognize the three Byzantine characters, but oh hell, I couldn't make head nor tail. Hey, how is it that you're up to your arse in undead ghoulies and still have enough sense to translate the prehistoric scribbles of a lost race? arrived from New Swabia here. Unconfirmed, sir. Task Force 68 lost contact with them over Thurston Island. And we've lost Paris. Azima's pulling out with survivors. Damn it. Have Captain Lien move her ships west and begin a search. Priority one, we need that sword. Sir, I... what is the sword going to do? We're outnumbered ten to one. That sword is the key to all this. The Nazis have opened the door to hell on Earth, and we're gonna close it. In Wiesbaden 1892, Peter Straub was born as the only child of a wealthy merchant. A reclusive child, at age 9, he was reported missing from the Straub estate for three days, only to be discovered in the family mausoleum, covered in self-inflicted cuts and scratches. This information was hidden to avoid it hindering young Peter's promising academic career, in which the local school deemed him as a prodigy. Straub soon rose through the academic circles to become a celebrated student at the universities of Bonn, Munich and Berlin between 1911 and 1915, and in the subsequent years, he served as a soldier during World War I and was severely wounded during the firefight in the Carpathians. Returning home with honours, he dove into his medical studies and found himself working closely with those who would go on to found the Nazi party. He purposed the ideas of Anunnaki, which was a Nazi project dedicated to researching the archaeology and cultural history of the Iron Race, and signed the founding documents for the organisation on July the 1st, 1935. With his unquestioning loyalty and innovative theories surrounding the rise and triumph of the Iron Race, Straub quickly became the academic pillar of this shadowy branch of the Nazi order. Straub built a reputation for being both creative and merciless, willing to subject anyone around him to experiments and cruelty if it might advance his agenda, an agenda which he sees as aligned with the Nazi parties. Straub's fascination with pain though was more than merely academic. Observers noted that he had a tendency to scratch at his neck, revealing what appeared to be a complicated and mathematically deliberated network of scars. During World War II, Dr. Straub was contacted by the Führer, Adolf Hitler, who requested him and his staff to create a type of soldier that doesn't rest, fear, or shy away from the shadow of death. While this happened, an aspiring scientist named Klaus Fischer informed the Anabi of the discovery of a hilt of a legendary sword that once belonged to the Holy Roman Emperor Frederick Barbarossa within the mining town of Mittelberg. When the Anabi was unable to remove the hilt from its resting place, they requested Straub and his men, along with Heinz Richter, who was a weapons expert in the Nazi armed forces, to come to the town to investigate, discovering the hilt as protected by a magnetic force. Upon arriving, he immediately had the entire town put on lockdown. Despite the help being protected by this mysterious magnetic force, Straub and his men were able to siphon vast amounts of energy from the hilt. During an early experiment to draw power from it, a cable overheated and snapped, striking two guards and instantly killing them. However, they soon began to twitch violently and reanimate before getting up, 
walking towards Straub with the intention to kill him. However, more guards soon arrived and put the two down. With this incident, Straub soon discovered the key to completing his task, as well as a vision of the Fury's future. Dubbing this new form of energy obtained from the hilt as Geistcraft, he discovered that it can be conducted through the human nervous system, which activates the most primitive part of the human cerebellum. This energy is what preserves the undead, as well as drive them. Straub also discovered that by triggering the pain receptors of the corpses, he could augment the zombie's strength and speed. While all of this was happening, Klaus attempted to prove himself to Straub by presenting his earlier works with his old mentor Leonard to him only to be met with imprudence from Straub, who claimed his works were poorly documented and amateur. Straub also talked of Klaus's father, who was Heinz Richter, and ridiculed him for his shift from weapon design to toy making. Straub would also later begin to have conflicts with Richter after the latter discovered the possibilities of various weapon designs with the use of his Geistcraft energy. During this time of conflict, Klaus, now aware of Straub's true intentions and his ever-growing conflict with Richter, found this opportunity to sabotage Straub's work. Sometime later, Straub learned of a secret cable dedicated of keeping the history of the sword a secret after stumbling onto Klaus's work. He then began to bring artwork into the bunker to find a way to break the seal on the hilt, and after learning that Klaus had betrayed him by making contact with the Allies, Straub manages to catch him as he is preparing to sabotage his most powerful weapon, the Panzer Mordor, and so decides to fuse Klaus with the beast as a punishment for his actions before going into hiding. A few days later, Klaus's sister, Marie Fischer, who was also an Austrian engineer and an OSS operative, is sent on a mission to her hometown village of Mittelberg by her commanding officer, Major Hank Riddu, to retrieve lost artifacts stolen by the Nazis for experimentation. Of course, also to rescue her brother Klaus, who had previously provided her information of his location. On her mission, Marie is assisted by a group of MFAA operatives, including Scottish ex-art thief, Rostin Hind, art historian turned French resistance fighter Olivia Dorant, and United States Army Captain Jefferson Potts, all of whom had significant knowledge on the stolen artifacts and relics. However, on their train ride to Mittelberg, the group was attacked by Straub's monster. Marie was left stranded from the others and found herself taking temporary refuge at a small farmhouse nearby, where she holds out against hordes of dead German soldiers reanimated by the Geistcraft energy, where eventually she was able to make her way to the village. After reuniting with the other three, Marie and the group proceeded further down into the village's hidden bunker, where they discover Straub's laboratory. There, they find the horrific experiments that Dr. Straub and Richter conducted, and as the group continues fending off against Straub's undead horde, as well as Richter, whose obsession with the weaponization of the Geistcraft energy puts him at odds with Straub. Eventually, the group recovers the artifact, the hilt of Emperor Frederick Barbarossa's sword, where they then encounter Straub's creation, the Panzer Morde, where they see Klaus fused into the creature's chest. Using special magnetised batteries, the group managed to stun the creature, causing it to be attached to Richter's zeppelin flying above the village. The zeppelin then explodes, killing the Panzer Mordo and freeing Klaus from its body. With Klaus now lying dead on the floor, the hilt of the sword somehow manages to revive him, causing him to be possessed by an unknown entity. Cloud then staggers into the village and tells Marie and the others to continue fighting and that the Emperor must never return, before activating a fire trap seemingly killing himself. Days later, the group receive intel on Straub's current whereabouts, leading them to the remote Heligo Islands, where Straub has been continuing his experiments with the Geistcraft energy. The group continues their pursuit of Dr. Straub and the next piece of the Emperor's sword, but comes into struggle with the Nazi forces and Straub's latest undead monstrosities, protecting the island as he prepares for an assault on Britain. While on the island, Drosten shares with the group details of his employment with Heinrich Himmler to search for an artifact here, and how he narrowly escaped death at the Nazis' hands whilst also recovering several ancient scrolls. Upon solving several riddles and puzzles, the group find ritual chambers dedicated to the goddess Nerthus, where they acquire the Pommel of Barbarossa, which is the second piece of the sword. The group then calls in an airstrike to destroy the facility on the island, as they escape on one of Dr. Straub's zeppelins 
as he and his forces returned to Berlin in response to Adolf Hitler's call for rescue. The Zeppelins arrive in Berlin hours later as the Red Army advances its invasion into the city. Realising that they will be outmatched by the sheer number of Dr. Straub's undead army, the four agents grab one of the Zeppelin's anchors and crash lands into the city below. After assisting a Red Army soldier named Mikhail, as well as a surviving smuggler in the war-torn undead infested city, the four agents are able to secure three special weapons. Using these special weapons, the four then uncover a hidden courtyard with the statue of Barbarossa where the blade of a sword is kept. With all of the pieces of the sword now collected, the crew infiltrates Dr. Straub's Zeppelin. However, Dr. Straub is overwhelmed and brutally murdered by his own twisted creations. The crew then battle against Dr. Straub's latest experiment where, after defeated, they then make their way back to the city, waiting for extraction by Major Riddu. In the wake of Straub's demise, the Undead Army is unleashed all across Europe. The United States President, Harvey S. Truman, authorises Riddu, now a general, to form the Bureau of Archaic Technologies, a special task force compromised of various elite allied agents in order to combat the new threat. And back with our four characters, Unable to reassemble the Sword of Barbarossa, Marie and Drosten deduce that their only option is to find the legendary forge of the fuel. The two of them, along with Jefferson and Olivia, then head to New Swabia, Antarctica, in search of the forge. Upon their discovery of increased Nazi activity in the area, Ridu orders several of the Bureau's operatives to transport the pieces of the sword via different routes to Swabia, where on their way, the operatives encounter resistance from the Undead Army in northern Spain and on the USS Mount Olympus across the Atlantic Ocean. Back in New Swabia, the crew finds the forge and upon the deciphering of a few ancient Thulian ruins, they finally reassemble the sword. The crew manages to escape the forge as it collapses onto itself. Unbeknownst to them, however, the Geizcraft energy begins to flow intensively beneath the ground. On their flight back to New Swabia, the crew's plane is struck by a bolt of Geizcraft lightning and crash lands near the site. They find themselves in the lost city of Thule, the source of Geizcraft energy, where the group uncovers ancient weapons once used by the Raven Lords, elite warriors who were meant to bring balance to the cycle of life and death. The group then uses the weapons against the Undead Horde, which is when BAT agent Vivian Harris, who was sent by General Riddu to recover Frederick Barbarossa's sword from the plane crash, is driven insane by its power and awakens the God King, a giant Thulian entity that claims to be the influence behind Dr. Straub and Emperor Barbarossa. The God King seemingly overpowers the group, but Klaus, now reborn as the new Rook, arrives and bestows the group with Geizcraft and the titles of the Raven Lords, allowing them to defeat the God King. Finally, General Ridu then contacts the group, revealing his true status as member of the Order of the Ravens, an ancient cult formed in order to serve the Raven Lords, where he insists that the group embraces their new powers and destiny and lead the Order in the ongoing battle against the remaining forces of the undead. And that is the end of the World War II zombie storyline as we know it.